Has it been designed to protect guests from the sun or the rain when they climbed out of their cars? But it no longer looked very welcoming, very safe. In its current state, it looked more likely to injure anyone who ventured beneath it. Maybe from falling masonry. Maybe from total collapse. Anna stopped the truck in the center of the lodge's parking lot and wiped her chin with a paper napkin. She had eaten her burger as she drove from the Winston Garden. She had been hoping to get to it before it went completely cold, but that ship had long sailed. It had been nasty and rubbery and congealed. That didn't stop her from finishing it, though, or reach her from plowing through both of his. Anna said, this is not how the place looked on the website when I booked. They're taking some major liberties with their advertising. Want me to find us somewhere else to stay? Reacher said no. It'll do just fine. Anna looked around the lot. There were three cars close together near the hotel entrance. Generic domestic sedans. Neutral colors, probably rentals. And an ancient vehicle <coughs> away to the right near a blue metal storage container, like the one they'd seen at the construction zone. It wasn't clear if the bus was... Here, if the bus was still capable of moving. Hannah said, there can't be many guests. That's a good thing. Are you sure? It isn't usually a good sign. <laughs> Today's not a usual day. I guess. Hannah took her foot off the brake, looped around and slotted the trap into the gap on the far side of the container. This won't fool anyone who's searching for us. But there's no point advertising where we are, right? She took off her seatbelt, reached for the door handle, then paused. But here's what I don't get. The cop who stopped us wasn't on the level, was he? He was expecting you to be driving, on your own. That was obvious. He was surprised when he saw me. He stammered. Then he was all over my ID, and he didn't even ask your name. And the idea that the DMV has updated Sam's records already. Give me a break. So given that the cop was bent, I didn't issue this. Or at least arrest us. Ever heard the expression, a fish rots from the head? No. I hate fish. What have they got to do with the cop? The way I see it, there's bound to be plenty of contact between the police and the prison. Escape trails. Visitors getting caught smuggling. Relatives causing a nuisance in the town. So there will be plenty of opportunity for Minerva to get its hooks into someone. Makes sense to go for someone high up, with authority, influence. The beat cops will just have orders to be on the lookout. From me, to the truck, to report anything they see. You think our guy would report that he saw us go to the Winston Garden? I'm counting. at the Riverside Lodge had a double-height domed ceiling painted to look like a blue sky with a few fleeting clouds. A chandelier hung down from its highest point. It was suspended directly over the center of a compass motif that was laid into the floor with black and white tile and gold dividers. The counter was made of mahogany. It was so shiny it almost glowed after decades of being polished by maids and getting rubbed by guests checking in and out. Reacher knew the hotel must be involved with computers since Hannah had made their reservation online. But none were visible. There was just a thick ledger bound in green leather. An old school telephone made of bakelite with a brown braided cable and a brass bell to summon attention when no one was waiting to help. Reacher tapped the plunger on top of the bell and a guy scurried out from a back room. He looked like he was maybe 25. He had blonde hair, a little long, but swept back in a neat, tiny style. He was wearing a gray suit. The creases in the pants were razor sharp. His shirt was pressed and his tie was properly knotted. The guy said, how can I assist you this evening? Reacher said, I need two rooms. Do you have a reservation? No. 
this is a spur of the moment thing. Let me see what I can do. The guy opened the ledger and took a fountain pen from his jacket pocket. How many nights? Let's start with one. We'll add more if we need them. No problem. Our standard rate is $85 per night per room. Let's say $100 cash for rooms well away from your other guests. The guy glanced left, then right. We only have three other guests presently. They're all at the near end of the south wing. How about the two rooms at the top? You won't even know the others are there. How about the north wing? Is it empty? It is, but I wouldn't recommend it. The refurbishment program hasn't been completed yet. It doesn't matter to me. To be honest, the refurb hasn't actually started. The rooms are a bit of a mess. Are they infested? Is there a health hazard of any kind? No, they're functional. Just a little on the scruffy side. You could say the same about me. Reacher glanced at the sign on the wall which directed guests to the two wings. It showed that rooms 101 through 124 were to the north. Give me 112. My friend will take 114. Assuming they're adjacent. The guy nodded. They are. Can I have your names? Ambrose Burns. Nat Kimball. The guy took the cap off his head. walked back to reception, tapped the bell, and waited for the smart-looking guy to appear. Then he laid one of the key cards down on the counter. He said, this one doesn't work. Can you reprogram it? The guy said, did you put it next to your cell phone? Or your credit cards? No. No. Well, what about the other one? It worked fine. I went into my room. Then I put it down and came out to speak to my friend. I figured I could get back in with this one, but no luck. Weird. The guy picked up the card. No problem, then. I can fix it right away. Reacher said, room 121. 
The guy worked the buttons on the little machine, dipped the key into the slot, and handed it back. Reacher slipped it into his pocket. Then the guy said, You're in 112. I remember because your friend is next door. Room 113. Reacher nodded. Correct. Room 112. Said 121. I'm good with numbers. I know exactly what I said. Well, whatever you said, I programmed it for 121. My mistake, I guess. You better let me have it back. Do it over. Creature shrugged. Pulled out the other card and gave it to the guy. The guy worked the machine again and handed the card back. The guy said, I'm really sorry about that. were going. 